Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, the weather's being a, a, a difficult, I guess you could say in some ways. Uh, this morning, it's supposed to be snowing outside. Uh, in fact, all the, the weather apps and the local weather and the weather radar and everything has been for, I don't know, at least two hours now saying that it's snowing and there's not been a single flake yet fall. It could still happen. They're, they're saying that we could get three to four inches this morning. Um, it'll get above freezing. I mean, it's above freezing now, but I mean up into the low 40s today. So I don't expect it to stick around too much. It'll be in the you know 40s, maybe 50s all week. But so far, nothing. Um, of course, they canceled school all in the area and stuff because of all this snow coming in. And it's, maybe it was all for nothing. We'll see. Um, so are you you ready for the for the economic collapse? Are you ready for the, the 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 bankruptcy of this country? I mean, it's it's already happening. It's already been happening. I get it, but um, there's just been a lot here lately of I guess you could say important people that's been warning. You know, these are the same people that just a few months ago was saying that everything's fine. You know, it's it's all okay. Uh, it, it's it's you know it, we we might have a at, at the worst a real soft landing recession or something like that, and, and now um, now they're speaking out a lot more about it. Uh, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, which is like the biggest bank in the world, um, he said yesterday that the the U.S. economy is the most predictable crisis uh, happening in history, that it is on the verge. Of, of collapsing all, all of this debt he said last week it's just unsustainable and now he's saying that it's it's on the verge of just basically imploding in on itself um, and, and you, when you mix that with the the border crisis that is is getting worse and worse there was a news article I believe yesterday uh, talking about how that all the violent crimes that that we all have heard about that are happening in all of these places around the world where there's been massive influxes of of illegals there the numbers are now starting to really show in in the cities where it's it's been happening so there's a crisis there there's there's a crisis there that is that, that we all have known is going to happen right i mean no one is is shocked by this none of us at least we're, we're not blown away we're not you know, in awe, surprised that this has happening. Um, but the the point is, is that it's the numbers are finally starting to catch up, and and they're they're starting to publicly admit it. So if they're publicly admitting um, that there is this explosion of violent crimes um, that are predominantly coming from um, these I illegal uh, immigrants, then it's probably a lot worse than that, right? It's it's probably worse. It's probably been going on for a lot longer, and the numbers are worse. So we're, we're looking at, here in the United States, just two things, simply two things that uh, we're being told now we're on the verge of a complete collapse. Um, of course, just days ago, we had the, the sheriff in Ohio talking about how there's uh, more red flags, meaning uh, you know more, more chatter of a potential terrorist attack in this country. Uh, due to all of the, you know, illegals that's come into this country, uh, more so than ever, more than there was before 9-11. And, and it, it's, it, it, he's saying that he's being told by, you know, federal agencies that, that they believe it's just, it's on the verge. It's just about ready to happen. And so, <clears throat> you know, you, when you look around, you, you see most, most of America, most of the world is, is really kind of trying to behave as normal, or at least that's what's being spun, right? Is that everything's normal, uh, we just go about our business, and you know, and, and honestly, you know, what are you supposed to do? You know, go, go hide in your bunker? Uh, not yet, probably, uh, but there's, there's definitely a, uh, we're, we're definitely on that edge, and I've been talking about that for a while. If you remember, what was it, a couple of years ago or so, two, maybe three years ago, um, the guy that was a, he's a former BlackRock director. Um, can't think of his name right now. I know someone's going to jump in and, and talk about him. He's, he's been talking a lot for the last couple of years on the vaccine, but, um, he also talks about other things and he was saying, he said, the plan is, is to just break it down, break it down and to wear people down 
and to wear the system down until it just hits a tipping point that it'll just eventually just fall off a cliff. I've heard that sort of prediction uh, or warning from several people in, in f fairly prominent uh, positions, people that would know more than you and I. That's they're they're a little bit more privy to stuff than you and I, and. I think that's very possible how what we're seeing happen. We're, we're watching things just gradually but rapidly worsening. Um, we're watching the economy get worse. We're you know there's more and more people speaking out about how things are just the, the cost of stuff is out of control. It was funny. I guess it was yesterday or day before last couple of days that Joe Biden um, gave an order to companies to stop this shrinkflation. Stop, stop shrinking products down in size, that that's just not good business practice. Well, okay, what are they supposed to do? Just continually raise the prices even more? Um, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, defending these big businesses. I'm sure they are, to some extent, taking advantage of the situation. But, the, you know, the truth is, is that the, the economy's awful and the dollar has less buying power. Um, they can they can fudge the numbers all they want when it comes to the dollar index and all that, but the reality is on the street is the dollar U.S. dollar has a drastic amount of less buying power. I've seen numbers anywhere between 17 and 20, maybe even 25 percent less buying power in the last three years. What that means is is that you're you're using more dollars to buy the stuff that you're used to buying. And that's why you're seeing, you know, 15, 18, $20 hamburgers that from the drive through and, you know, 12, $15 Subway sandwiches and, and all of this kind of stuff. It's, you know, housing prices that are just ridiculous. Houses that three years ago cost, you know, $150,000 or $300,000 now. Um, this is gonna continue to get worse and it's gonna, there, there is going to be, there almost has to be a, a bottoming out. Which is, which is another term for, I guess, falling off the cliff. Um, these problems like this, whether it's economic, whether it's a migrant, you know, crossing the borders, all this kind of stuff, they, they typically aren't going to just fix themselves. You know, I was talking to uh, some guys yesterday, and even if, even if the border was, and I've said this before, even if the border was shut down today or tomorrow and, and completely locked down, there's been so much come across, so much problems coming across, and, and I'm not saying they all are, um, that, I, I, I mean, we may already be past the point of no return when it comes to just the migrant problems. And then also with the economy. Um, I, I don't see, and I'm not any kind of economic genius, but I don't see any possibility right now of the, the economy fixing itself. Of, of the government or the Fed or whoever being able to fix the economy without some type of bottoming out. And I, the, the big question I think for a lot of us is, is what, how severe is that going to be? Well, when you add to it, you know, wars and, and just the social decline and decay and um, you know, rampant immorality and, and things like that, uh, I think it's gonna be a, a pretty big doozy. I think that there's a possibility of things being, you know, quite serious and so um, that's where you and I come in of, of how how do we get ready for this how do we prepare for this I mean we keep doing the things we're doing make sure you've got a good supply of stuff but honestly that I think the biggest things are you know getting your head in the right space re realizing that that you know that this is what's happening. It's, it's going to continue to happen. And we're bracing ourselves for this tidal wave. Um, so that, it, you know, it doesn't throw you off guard. That, that's probably one of the, the worst things that happens during a crisis. Um, I've seen it in the past. And then now that I'm, I'm dealing with, with people's crises again, um, I see that. And I see, you know, someone has a heart attack and falls over and then the people around them panic and they don't know what to do and, the, and, and they do nothing. Uh, versus someone has a heart attack, falls over, and um, someone there is, is trained and skilled and dealt with this kind of stuff before, and they just immediately go into action and, and potentially saving the person's life. <clears throat> that, that's, a, that's a very micro version of, of what's going on in the world today. Things are falling apart, and at some point, it's, it's likely going to fall off a cliff. And if you just stand around in shock, 
um, and awe and panic and fear, um, it may not go very well for you. A lot of times, uh, depending on the scenario, moments or hours or days can, can make a big difference. And so getting ourselves in the right headspace so that when this happens or as it drastically worsens, uh, we're not in, caught off guard and, and into this panic and not knowing what to do. That To me, that's a, a huge, huge part of what preparedness is, is just getting yourself, you know, the tools are great. Um, I've said this before, if you go back and you look at the early pioneers and stuff, um, <clears throat> there, were, there were many recorded incidences of people that had very little gear, very little stuff that survived, and there's others that had lots of stuff and they didn't survive. So the, the gear, the supplies, the preps, isn't the thing that's going to cause you to survive. It is just a tool that's going to make survival easier. Um, what is going to get you through it is, is your mindset. Um, your mindset, uh, your, your, your physical endurance, uh, and, and I also believe your spiritual walk with the Father. I think that's, that's a huge, huge factor also. And so that's, that's just where we need to be. I, I know that um, y you wanna sometimes get a video on uh, you know, some kind of new gadget or some kind of you know, new trinket that's gonna save you that you can, you, know, you can run your whole house on this one little box, you know, that kind of stuff. And that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. But really in the end, it's, it's what's going on up here. Um, and, and how you handle the situation, because it's coming. I mean, I, I don't see any other way at this point. It's coming, and we need to be ready for it. You need to be getting your houses in order and preparing yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.